guys, I'm Kim, and today I just want to explain for our event leaders and our competitors the way that we will be running optics in the laser shoot in North Carolina. The boxes that we used last year, for those of you who participated, the same boxes we'll be using again this year. They've got the four sides, they've got the centimeter tape already um, taped on the inside. For my event leaders, the things that you will get from, North from our office, you will get six mirrors blocks. You only need five but we're including an extra one for in case someone breaks one along the way. And you'll get three barrier mirrors. If one barrier mirror is used for division B, but you need three for division C. These are standardized in the rules so that you need to give the competitors the five blocks. It's not up to you how many that they get to use for the laser shoot. They get to use between one and five. A clarification that we're posting on the website as well is that our mirrors are one eighth of an inch thick here in North Carolina. So um, they won't be one sixteenth like the rules state in the national manual. So this event does take a little bit of prep time at the beginning to set up. So if you come over here and check out the lasers that you'll be included in here, one of the first things you have to do when you set up the laser shoot box is see where the laser hits on the back wall. You can pick somewhere on the back wall that you want to be where the um, students are aiming for. For these boxes, because last year we were in, um, aiming at the back center line, that's where it's drawn. If you're going to have them aim at something else, you must make it very clear as to where that is. And it must be the same for every box that we use. So you're gonna look at the back wall, see where your laser lines up. I'm gonna try and get it to line up to the center line. We've included lots of things in the box so that you can make that happen. So mine is not currently lined up um, directly on the back. So I've, we've got post-it notes, we've got popsicle sticks, we've got screwdrivers so that you can adjust these. And you wanna get it so that it's straight right there on that center line so that every competitor's got the exact same um, situation. We've included these little laminated sheets. That's what you're gonna put in front of the laser before the competition starts. We have barrier mirrors. They're labeled barrier mirror, so it's easy to know which ones are for that. And not that they're any different, it's just to, it's more of a head count thing so that you know which things go where. For division B, you need one barrier mirror somewhere on the center line. It can be close, it can be far, it can be turned at any different angle that you want. It cannot be um, ex exactly perpendicular back to the laser. That makes it incredibly difficult Right, because it, that means that your light is bouncing directly back to your laser and the students are gonna have to put a mirror in front which blocks the laser so that doesn't work. So you need to set it at some sort of angle. You get to choose what it is and you need to mark it in the box, okay? Because it must be the same for every competition or every competitor all day long. And for those of you in lots of these tournaments will be running more than one laser shoot box at the same time, these barrier mirrors must be in the exact same place in each box all day long. So we included a protractor in the box as well and a ruler so that you can determine um, that you've got the barrier mirror set in the exact same place. But go ahead and mark it, outline it lightly in pencil. I mean, these boxes travel with us, so we'll be using them week to week and we change where the barriers are gonna be. For division B, you'll put the one in the box. When it's division C time, you'll, you can enter these other two barriers anywhere that you want. We've included double-sided tape, okay? Double-sided tape can go on the mirrors that are off the midline, but not the barrier mirror that's in the middle, okay? And I'll explain that, the difference in the rules this year in just a second. So you're gonna cover, when you're setting this up, you're gonna cover these with post-it notes, all included in the box, okay? Like that, so that Competitors can't get a line of sight on the mirrors, but it says before you start the competition with the competitors, you have to be able to show them that the laser actually hits the center line where it's supposed to. So that means this barrier mirror has to be removable. And that's why this you can, you can feel free to outline the entire box, the entire um, cube, so that you know that you've gotten it exactly back where you in the same place. So you're gonna show them before they start that it hits directly on that center line, okay? Then you put the guard back in, you put your cube back right in the same place for every team and every um, 
box, then they've got four minutes in order to try and set their own mirrors. You can, students, you can use between one and five mirrors. It's up to you how many you use. You may use tools and templates inside this box. If you're the first competitor of the day and the event leader tells you, no, you're not allowed to use that, stop, have call time out and ask for a clarification on the ruling on that because we had a little bit of trouble with that last year and people didn't quite understand. Um, and we want every team to get to use the tools they practice with, all right? So students, you, it's your job to know these rules inside and out and to help our volunteers do right by you when you do these competitions. So you've got your five mirrors, they've shown you the center line, and if they haven't done these things, ask, okay? Once they say three, two, one, start, you have four minutes to set your mirrors inside the box, and then when you call time or four minutes is up, then we will hit the laser and we will measure. Okay, so we'll say the four minutes is up. I'm gonna say this was a division B, so we only had the one barrier. I'm not going to pretend that I have spent time making sure this works or learning my lasers the way that you guys have. So you don't get to use um, the laser turned on to set yours but I just wanted to show you. So now four minutes is up, the event leader comes over, hits the button, okay? And here is where my laser hit. We're going to measure from there back to the center line, if this was my goal for the day. And you're measuring in millimeters. Each one of these lines is a millimeter. You're measuring the horizontal distance. If instead, and that's what you're gonna write into the score sheet, how far off they were from the middle line. If instead, Oh, and if instead I really calculated this wrong, am I, we, but that's okay, you tried, right? So you look, and now my laser has hit over here. You're going to measure the shorter distance down whichever side it goes. This was where your target was. You're measuring all the way around the corner and all the way down the side in millimeters as to where their target hit. Just because it doesn't hit the back wall doesn't mean they're disqualified, doesn't mean you don't get any points. You're measuring the shorter of the two distances um, all the way around the box. That score gets written into the, sc um, the scoring program and that counts for your accuracy score. You get points for how many barrier or how many mirrors you used and then you get points for your test. When that, when that competition or that student group is done, you're gonna take the mirrors out, okay? You're gonna reset um, everything, take your, take your barrier mirror out, show the next group, hey, it still hits right in the center, okay? Put your barrier mirror back. All of these mirrors, I'm sorry I didn't show that, should all be covered in post-it notes, okay? While the students are placing them. Um, and you'll give this stack to the next student group, give them four minutes, and repeat the process all over again. Have a great day. Thanks for helping us at Science Olympiad.